Welcome back to the Elevate series for Mastering General Dentistry. I've been given the tough job of trying to explain adhesion in 15 minutes. Good luck to me. Now, from my experience, bonding and adhesion are one of the most difficult subjects to teach and one of the most poorly understood across our profession. So let's try and see if we can break this down without too many fancy slides, maybe a couple of nice pictures along the way, but otherwise you've just got me for the next 15, 20 minutes. How do we make this start nicely? So I wanna get a decorator around to paint my wall. The decorator comes, they have a look. What they are not gonna do, they are not gonna get the paintbrush out and start painting. That wall has been covered in dust, grit, grease, whatever for many years. The first thing they're gonna to have to do is strip back that wall to get to a clean surface and then prime it, ready for that paint to absorb. This brings us to part one, biofilm. Our teeth in the mouth, chewing foods, liquids, accumulation of plaque all day long become covered in biofilm. How many of you actually disclose a tooth before we do any adhesive dentistry? I admit, until last year, I never did this. However, now I make sure I use a disclosing solution, I paint this on the tooth, I wash and dry it, and I am shocked that 90% of that tooth is covered in biofilm. Now I suddenly don't feel comfortable about the rest of my bonding procedure because I know that phosphoric acid will not demineralize and remove biofilm efficiently. So the first thing we want to talk about when it comes to adhesion is the use of air abrasion. We use air abrasion of aluminum oxide, particle size 27 to 50 microns. And you can do this in a simple chair side blaster, which will cost you about somewhere between 200 to 400 pounds, or a beautiful all singing, all dancing Aquacare unit closer to two, three and more thousand pounds. But essentially the idea is to blast the surface to remove any biofilm to go back to a clean enamel surface. Interproximally, where you can't necessarily get the air abrasion in, I will use a metal strip like an IPR strip to ensure that my class two composites and in between my anteriors are beautifully clean. So now we have a clean surface to bond to, and not just that, by air abrading, we've increased our surface area to bond to. Part two, how do we manage enamel and dentine bonding? Now, as dentists, we have the most predictable material we can to bond to, enamel. This is why, no matter how underconfident some dentists may be, composites have worked so well in class four situations and class one occlusal composites where we have an abundance of enamel to bond to. But why is that? Well, enamel is a highly crystalline structure. Imagine glass prisms. Essentially, there's almost zero water and no collagen. It's over 90% pure mineral. Amazing. We apply phosphoric acid all over that enamel and we find that acid will demineralize the surface and create etch patterns for which we then wash and dry. And we can dry as much as we want to get that beautiful frosty appearance. And we end up with these beautiful porosities for resin to then infiltrate and create a fantastic hybrid layer that once we cure, it is incredibly durable. This is why a class four composite, which is totally unprotected from any other surface apart from the bonding surface, generally tends to work very well. We can have chipping, we can have staining and discoloration, but we don't often get a true debond. Fantastic. However, dentine is a totally different beast. If I imagine I've got a pack of straws and if I hold that pack of straws and turn it towards you this way, you can all imagine what I'm saying. We've got these little rings of the straws. That represents the mineral content of dentine. Only about 60 to 70% is mineral. Within those straws, we are filled with collagen fibers, water. It's a living structure that allows us to have proprioception, thermal sensitivity, and also deposit further minerals in response to bacterial invasion. It's a fantastic substrate. We were just not sure how to bond to it effectively because the minute we apply acid etch to our dentine, the bits that demineralize are the rings of those straws. And as they demineralize, we are left with this fibral structure of collagen in water. And you all remember, what were we taught at university? When it comes to drying, they said, dry but don't desiccate. 
Leave moist, but don't leave it wet. Now guys, I don't know about you, but I'm just using a humble three-in-one syringe. I haven't got a clue what percentage of humidity I have, let alone if I'm working with a class two composite on different levels. So this brings our first point of variability, because if I over dry the dentine, my collagen collapses. And now I'm gonna try and use a bonding system. And in my head, I'm thinking this magic little bottle is going to get in, remove the water, rehydrate those collagen, infiltrate resin, and when I cure it, I'm gonna have a predictable hybrid layer for 20 years. Sorry guys, it ain't gonna happen. Once those collagen fibers collapse, you are gonna have a very poor bond to the surface, and you're already gonna have high risk of post-operative sensitivity and a premature bond failure. If we go the other way, if we don't dry enough and we leave this pool of moisture, we then don't have enough solvent in our bonding agent to remove that water to allow that hydrophobic resin to seep in and form that hybrid layer. So we already end up with water trapped, which is gonna allow bond breakdown, and we're gonna end up again with premature failure. I guarantee you, if I took a room full of dentists, I gave them all the exact clinical situation of a surface of dentine cleaned after caries removal. After etching the dentine and washing, I bet all of us would end up with a varying amount of humidity and moisture left on that dentine surface. I go one step further. If I saw a patient and an hour later saw the exact same patient do the exact same tooth, I bet you even I couldn't get the same moisture control. And yes, if we look at the studies we were traditionally told, total etch systems such as Optibond FL are the gold standard. But if we look at the testing conditions in a laboratory, they are taking extracted teeth, they are flattening the dentine to one uniform disc, and they are using a dedicated clean air spray with a certain pressure from a certain distance away from that surface. So they are able to control that moisture at every point of that bonding protocol. When I'm dealing with a class two composite that's running subgingival, I don't have that luxury, let alone with my dodgy three and one tip. It's very, very tricky to control. So chemists realized this many years ago. This is not a new phenomenon when we try and move away from etching dentine because they realized that what they were testing in the labs wasn't happening in clinic. So they've tried to invent incredibly clever chemistry that allows us to not have to etch the dentine. You may have heard of bonding agents that call themselves universal bonding agents or self-etching bonding agents. Whether they come in one or two bottles is a different story, but the principles are so important to understand. They realized that a room full of dentists, like I said, cannot achieve the same humidity of dentine and therefore the variability on clinical success is too vast, which is why a lot of dentists complain that they suffer from post-operative sensitivity, marginal leakage and premature staining when they are doing restorations, especially class twos, which are bonded at the box to dentine. If you are using a total etch system, don't panic. Yes, I prefer a universal and self-etching system, which I'm gonna to talk to you about in a second, but we can get excellent results if you follow the protocol carefully. My protocol in our practice is we apply our etch to the enamel, the etch must be nice and viscous. I apply the etch to my enamel, and then my nurse starts a timer. Yes, that's right, a basic kitchen timer. If I go to Claridge's and Gordon Ramsay's gonna cook me a fish, I don't wanna think he's cooked his fish for about two minutes, about five minutes. I wanna know that fish has been in that sous vide for exactly four minutes. That's why we've got a kitchen timer. As soon as my timer gets to 15 seconds, I then flood the cavity with etch onto the dentine. At 30 seconds, I start washing. What does that mean? That means my dentine has only been etched for 15 seconds and my enamel has been etched for the full 30. This has been shown to limit the over etching of dentine and reduce the risk of collagen fibril collapse. And once you've washed, which we typically wash for as long as we've etched for, we then dry lightly for five to 10 seconds and as soon as we can, we then apply our bonding agent. Whether you use a single bottle or a two bottle system, you need to be ready quick. The other key point is the primer in these bottles contain a solvent. That solvent gets into the tubules and evaporates the water. 
So please don't make the mistake of dispensing your bonding agent half an hour before you need it because the solvent will be gone. Get your nurse to only dispense the bonding agent just as you're about to use it. Get her to shake it vigorously to mix up all the chemistry, open it and dispense a few drops onto a Dappen's dish. And this is the key point. Take your micro brush and you need to actively rub and scrub. Don't just leave it and start looking at the TV or looking at the time. Actively rub and scrub and keep reapplying fresh bonding agent for 30 seconds. And after 30 seconds, you're going to dry with your nurse suctioning in to remove the excess resin for 10 seconds or until the adhesive stops moving and then you light cure. This should ensure that you don't over etch the dentine, you prevent over drying and you're getting the primer on as soon as possible with lots of fresh solvent to evaporate that excess water. So if you are using a total etch system, hopefully that should really help you prevent some of the problems you might have been having. But if we want to maximize the most modern and efficient ways of long-term successful dentine bonding, then we need to look no further than a paper in 2011 by Bart Van Meerbeek called State of the Art Self-Etch Adhesives. And he recently updated this in 2021. And it's a phenomenal paper that shows us that where chemists have realized that there's too much variability amongst dentists worrying about etching dentine, leaving it too moist, too dry, let's take that problem away and use clever chemistry with compounds such as MDP, which allow us to rub on the tooth and rather than deep etch patterns from an aggressive acid like phosphoric acid, instead, it just demineralizes the very top surface and allows a pseudochemical reaction to form a very durable bond to that dentine. But the key is there's been no etching, no washing, and therefore no worrying about over drying. And that chemistry has been shown to provide an incredibly durable bond strength for five to 10 years, which is far better than the six to 18 months, which has been shown uh, when you etch dentine. Self-etching or universal bonding agents contain these functional primers such as MDP, which allow us to bond to dentine without etching first, also allow us to get a predictable bond to a variety of other materials, are the way forward in my eyes because of their simplicity. The beauty of this technique is we are using that same viscous etch I talked about earlier. We are applying it on the enamel. Why are we applying it on the enamel? because as good as the bond is of MDP and other such monomers to dentine, they are not able to provide a durable enough bond to the enamel. So enamel, that beautifully crystalline structure, it still needs the help of a real aggressive acid like phosphoric acid to be able to create a long-term bond. So we are applying the etch to our enamel borders, leaving it for 30 seconds, washing it, and here's the key, we are properly drying it because I'm not worried about dehydrating my dentine because I haven't etched it. Same principle, my nurse will then shake my universal bond and dispense it just as I need it. And I'm then actively rubbing, scrubbing and reapplying. Bart Van Meerbeek has showed us that the continual refreshing of that primer will allow that monomer MDP to form a layered network which is incredibly stable over years. After 30 seconds of active application, we are then drying again with suction to remove the excess adhesive. And when the adhesive stops moving, usually around 10 seconds, we are then light curing for 20 seconds. Now, this means that same group of dentists I talked about earlier, there's no reason why after sandblasting and following this selective etching protocol, we should be able to get the exact same bond strength and the exact same durability. Don't panic if a tiny bit of that etch runs onto the dentine, especially on a deep class two, because the nature of universal bonding agents mean they are still able to work with etched dentine. You don't need to start all over again. Now, most of you will be using a universal bonding agent that comes in one bottle, and these work great. But if we're talking pure chemistry, I personally like to separate my wet chemistry and my dry chemistry which is why in our practice, we use a two bottle system such as G2 Bond by GC. But don't get confused, the protocol is very similar. The etching around the enamel is still 30 seconds, washing, drying nicely. 
The primer is then applied vigorously and actively for 20 to 30 seconds and dried. And then the dry chemistry, the bonding agent, is then repeated and done again for 20 to 30 seconds and dried. So it doesn't really add time, but for me, separating the wet phase and the dry phase makes sense and has been shown in the literature to be the best long-term durability for your dentine bonding. So if we are using a total etch system and we don't quite understand how to use it properly, the reason why we've got away with it for so long is because with class one composites and class four, we have a lovely border of enamel to have that predictable bond. Now in a class one composite, that may sound great. And even if the dentine bond fails, does it matter? Well, let me pose this. If that patient was to fracture a cusp and in future we decide to do a crown preparation on that tooth, by definition of a preparation, we remove a lot of that enamel. When we then come to take our impression, some of you may have had this, I know I certainly have. I go to take an impression of my prep, I take the impression out, I look at the tooth, something doesn't look right, I look at my impression, my core fillings ended up in my putty. Why has that happened? Why has that core filling come off the dentine? Another scenario, my patient sees a hygienist and they come to see me afterwards and they say, I just went for a clean and your hygienist was cleaning and a filling came out. Should a bonded composite totally come off? This should not be happening. But if we look at the why, it all points back to the fact that dentine bonds fail. And my final point on that is the minute we apply acid etch to the dentine surface, as well as the variables with drying, we also release enzymes called MMPs, which are shown to break down that collagen over time. So you're already at a loss. And this is why we stopped etching dentine altogether and moving towards a self-etch or universal bonding system for long-term predictability. So in summary, remove biofilm by air abrasion, apply your acid etch to the enamel borders for 30 seconds, wash for as long as you've etched for, and you can take your time drying. Make sure your nurse has the bond literally dispensed as you're about to use it, shake, and then vigorously apply and refresh to ensure maximum efficiency of the chemistry. And then after 30 seconds with a single bottle system, dry with active suction, light cure, and most of your issues with post-op sensitivity, marginal leakage, and premature bond failure should be dealt with. And if you're using a two bottle system, of course, you are doing 20 to 30 seconds with your first bottle, which is your primer, drying with the suction, and then repeating this with your second bottle for 20 to 30 seconds, continually reapplying and then drying and following the usual curing times. Okay, wasn't quite 15 minutes, but it wasn't far off. We look forward to seeing you again at the next video. Thanks a lot.